So there's this guy uh, that was retweeted uh, yesterday. Well, that was uh, published by Libs of TikTok. Apparently, it comes from his TikTok or something, YouTube Reels account. This is a person who was a female and who transitioned to male. And you look at their face. It's like, it's a kind of aesthetically uh, successful transition in the sense that there is a way if I don't pay attention and if I don't hear this person speak, there is a way I could conclude that they are a male if I see them on the street. But the reality that was exposed in this video is just how little, uh, how little success these trans people have at converting their brain into the brain of a male, the, the brain, the true brain of a male, the true brain of a female. And that may be the, the last frontier that they may never be able to cross because the brain develops itself, uh, you know, with genetic uh, programs that are deployed across all of life. And I wouldn't be surprised if the brain develops itself from very early age for the behaviors of a male and the behaviors of a female. We see it in children when they when they start playing with toys. It's like, no, we don't have to impose culturally that the little girl will like uh, to play with puppets and that the little boy will like to play with Tonka trucks and that kind of stuff. It's, it's automatic in 99% of the cases. You don't have to do anything. And the young little girls, one year old, two years old, you put clothes on them and they're like, oh, oh this is beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Oh, cute. And, and the boys, they don't care. Already the behavior gets set so early in uh, childhood about behaviors that are male in nature and female in nature. That It tells you that the structure of the brain as a whole is taking a direction, the direction of the sex that it's been determined to take. And here you can have a stunning adult telling of how it feels to, uh, how it feels to have basically the body of a male but still have the female cognition to process the, the social events around you. Look at this. I want to go word by word because this is so important. There are so many details in there that are informative and educational about what is the difference between a male and a female. Nobody told me how lonely being a man is. I had closer friendships with random. Men adore long loneliness. It's like uh, I'm begging for loneliness at times. I, I would like a little more of it, let me tell you. Uh, there is no problem with loneliness with males because we can rebuild the world. We can rebuild our world in loneliness. You leave me alone for a year, for five years. You know, in fact, even this Tom Hanks movie where he was going on his island, a lot of people were shocked by this and they were like, oh my God, it's so, it must be incredible to be truly alone and he goes insane. The fact is, I've always looked at this movie and felt that I don't know if it's that dramatic, you know? Uh, if you leave me alone for a couple of years, I'm going on a, yeah, Castaway is the name of the movie. If you leave me alone for a couple of years, I'm going on a streak of, prime number research, I'm taking a pen and a paper and I'm spending these years having fun, working on building, working on whatever it is that I can, that I can affect in the world, I'll do it. Only females experience it as an issue to be socially isolated. Only females. And already from the first five words of this person, you can tell they have a different brain. They see loneliness as something that, that puts them in a state of despair. Random women I met in the bathroom before I transitioned at clubs because of how open women are. Okay, so a male brain doesn't form attachment in the bathroom. Absolutely not. You know why? Because it's gay. 
first, but ultimately why? It's that first, the bathroom is a public space for something that is uh, technical. It, we have to have this. We have to pee and we have to shit. It is not the proper time to have social interactions. Secondly, every single movement of a male will be interpreted against them as some form of sexual approach or sexual attack. That is how males are used to behave in society. And so if one male would approach another male in the male bathroom, that would be seen as gay. Why? Because a male approaching you is a male who wants to fuck you. That is how it works. And so we don't develop attachment in the bathroom like ladies do. Ladies are using the bathroom uh, basically as a mirror, uh, as a room of mirrors, where they can both see their own image, see the image of their friends, see the image of other girls that are beside but that they don't know and who would constitute potential competitors to their sexual ladder escalating. And that's why they spend so much time doing all the makeup stuff and doing each other's makeup. There is no interaction possible within the male bathroom. That is why the only interactions that there are are actually to, to, dis, to, to destroy, to annihilate the awkwardness of the bathroom encounter. So sometimes you're going to have a guy peeing in the in the urinating device and sometimes they're going to say something like nice day huh but but they're going to be so restricted about that they're going to reduce the sentence to the minimum and it's really going to be to disentangle the potential awkwardness of not speaking at all but 99% of the time yeah a urinal that is the term thank you nicolas petris uh, most of the time, 99% of the time, you won't even get that small sentence. Um, because any interaction ever is an approach for sex, or it is a very old friend that you've trusted for super long. Then I've had in my eight years of transitioning. Now, this person realizes that they have more friends from back in the days of going into the woman's bathroom <laughs> than they could make into eight years of being a male. That, that is the proportion. Welcome to the club, bro. Male friendship doesn't function in any way. It doesn't work. We don't want it. Now, there's these groups of barbecue goers but that will happen if you live at a certain place and you have males that you trust and you want to interact with, you will invite them to your barbecue, but that's it. And sometimes you will go together to sports event. And if both are single or one is single, there's going to be this process of going together to the bar to hunt females. But th that is it. That stops here. There, there is no such thing as males wanting to elevate their own sense of themselves and rest on the shoulders of each other. If you cannot stand on your own, you are not a male. Because women are just so much more vulnerable and deep. And, and that is the error. That tells me you are still a woman. Women are not more vulnerable and deep. Have you ever seen a woman capable of expressing awe at the ID of a prime number? Have you ever had a woman, uh, you know, had bright eyes in front of a construction and the solidity of a wall or the solidity of a roof or, or all of the possibilities that emerge from a two by six? Never. Women are incapable of depth and seeing awe in the world. Now, what you describe as women are so much more vulnerable and deep is the maze of complications within FemCog. You have a maze of complications that allows them to bounce back 
onto any social situation and find them interpersonally conflictual. That is what you call the depth of woman. That is an infinite loop of self-offense, narcissism, and issues that they have with the social world, combined with a, a total inability to connect with the real world. That is deep in a way, but it's, it's deep in the way that a, a random mace built in a CPU is deep. It's like there's nothing at the bottom. It's just left, right, left, right, left, right, and there's never an exit. Man. But to have known, and I think a lot of trans men feel this, is we knew what de depth felt like before we transitioned. Wow. That, that is something I didn't know. I didn't know a, a human being would ever have this experience. This person remembers what it is to have femcog. They don't realize that they don't have yet male cognition. They don't realize <coughs> that they're still stuck in femcog. But they, they, they are in another part of the maze of feminine cognition. And in that part, they remember the old female cognition they had. And look at what he describes. And we knew what it felt like to like have people want to hug us. See, that, see, his cognition hasn't become male. He's still within female cognition and expecting hugs. Bro, males don't get hugs. You might get a hug. You, you get hugs from your wife. You get hugs as part of sex. You, don't, you, you may get a fatherly hug once in your life, twice, maybe. Uh, but it, it is a very female-based cognition to be expecting hugs and to be kind of missing that. Only females want hugs. And have people want to talk to us. Ah, there you go. People don't want to talk to you. You are the shit of this world. You are the dancing... Uh, what is the Fight Club saying? You are the all dancing shit of the world. You are part of the same compo compost heap as everyone else. That is what being a male is. And then, and then, if you want people to want to listen to you, then you have to go into a career. You have to specialize. You have to be on social media or something like this. But that is another business and it comes with its own pile of shit. But yeah, people don't want just to talk to a regular male. Are you insane? Nothing interesting. Men are interesting because of what they do. And have a community. And then you transition and you're just a guy walking down the street that people cross the street so that they're not near you. <laughs> and see, this, uh, and he's going to go deeper into this. He still holds a hate of males. Fascinating. Someone who considers that they have transitioned to males, he considers that there is such a thing as trying to avoid males on the street crossing the other side of the street to avoid facing a guy. Now, I, I had never heard of this claim. Is, is, it, is it the case that people are crossing the streets to avoid white males? Because I've heard... I've heard the claim in totally different contexts, but I've never heard that this was a whole male phenomenon, that people would be crossing the street to avoid white males. Never heard this. People have been telling me that they were crossing the street for other groups in society. Never white males. So he has a bigger tree that's left inside of him. And friendships are so much harder to build. <laughs> You're not going to build friendship. You have to be useful in a friendship. Useful would be to have children, and then a friendship will form in the sense that another family will want to see you so that their children interact with yours. But, but you have to be a reproductive male for this to happen. Friendship, just out of the emotional need of it, is a thing for children, even children. I mean, it's a thing that we, we children get 
until they grow into a full adult that understands it's a loss of time. And people are colder. What's hard is none of this invalidates how real and raw women and people who are in marginalized groups feel about cis white men. There you go. Still bigoted. Bigoted. We have created the perfect male. The male that the uh, that the elite wanted. That is the perfect. That is their ideal male. See, from their perspective, the, the biological male is kind of a, uh, it's a prototype. This is a white transgender man who, ha who has a bigotry against white cis men. <laughs> we have achieved perfection, leftist perfection. This person is bigoted about what they become, what, what they became. And now they have this female cognition reflex to be adding a caveat, which is, oh, you know, I feel alone and all, but I fully understand what I, why I'm alone. There are true revendications against people like me because now I'm a cis white, I'm a white male. I'm not cis, but I look cis. And so it's totally normal that I'm rejected because I'm what society hates. Oh, that's valid. Uh, and I wouldn't want to invalidate it with my tears, my white tears. Isn't it fascinating? But I also now understand why the suicide rate is so much higher in men. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the suicide rate, to begin with, is much higher in trans than it is in male. So you're in a bad category right now. Because this shit is lonely. And I'm an emotionally mature man. And this I said on Twitter today. There is not a single emotionally mature man who will ever say that they are an emotionally mature man. Because becoming an emotionally mature man involves not caring about emotions whatsoever. And so you're never going to claim it as a credit of yours on your CV that you're an emotionally mature man. <laughs> the full maturity of the man emotional life is the void. It's like a black hole. Absorbing everything that exists, even light. That is the state of absolute maturity. That is the point at which you reach emotional maturity. You're not there, my friend. You're not there. I know how to build friendships, and it is still really, really... If you're into the friendship framework, you are not a male yet. Really hard. Try to think about how... It, a male realizes, because a male has been treated as a tool all of their lives. What is a male? What is a male? This could be the, the next documentary of... Uh, uh, of uh, Matt Walsh, it, wouldn't, it would be great to have, what is a man, Matt Walsh? A man is someone who for all their life has been set on a losing game in modern society, who has been turned into a tool by the mechanisms of capitalism, and who says in front of all this, yet I'm not going to consider myself a victim, I'm going to escalate the world of existence with this use that they want to do of me and I will get away with the cash and with the cash I will recreate a world for my family, for my children and I will continue existence that's what being a man is and, and so <clears throat> we don't think about friendships we think about the use can we be useful to someone Hey, can I go with you? We're going to build this house together. Hey, I could do the electricity on your house. Would that be useful to you? Hey, my children want to go outside. Do your children want to go outside? Always the use, always the tool of someone else. Because you are part of the same compost heap as the rest of the world. You don't matter. You're not a special snowflake. Welcome to the club. Oh, you can.
in your small little community where you feel safe can reach out. See, concepts of feeling safe. There, there is no safe or not safe. The world is always dangerous for a male because anyone could interpret any movement in their direction as a form of sexual attack. There is no such thing as a community for a male. There is a bunch of people who may be obstacles or who may be tools for reaching our goals. To them in your life and just help them feel maybe seen for a moment. Absolutely not. This is, this is the worst psychological counsel you can give to people because you know what, I, what I'm going to be stuck with because of these counseling? I'm going to get all of these boomers and these women and the, everyone will come to me and say, Jeff, I'm just checking on you. Please tell me about how you really feel. And it's like, no, you don't understand. I've become a black hole for feelings. Nothing comes out. And no, it's not because I've been mistreated or because you've been socialized by your father to be that way, or you feel the pressure of society not to interpret your emotions and your true self. Fuck you. I know my true self, and my true self is to aspire to this black hole of emotions. Because life is short, I don't give a shit about my emotions, all of them will rot by bacteria, just like the rest of my body when I'm dead. And the best way I've come to realize to, to be making things in life, to be producing useful stuff in life, is to not let these interpersonal emotions and conceptions of myself and paranoid delusions in your head to determine my state and determine how I appreciate my contributions to this world. Or do do little little conversations to help. No, not little conversations. They make me lose time, bro. Little conversations are the fucking worst. Tell me what you need from me. You need me to fix your printer. Here, I'm fixing your printer. Do you want to give me a reward for this? Oh, you got lobsters? Oh, you're, you're a lobster fisherman? Give me three lobsters. Bye. Help their emotional maturity so that they can reach out to people and have deeper guy friendship. Absolute misunderstanding of male cognition. And that is so sad in a way because there's not a set of hormones that will rewire the brain. You had to have this from year one in your life. I've seen the babies develop, and it is my conclusion that the genderification of the babies is not social at all like the leftists believe. It is biological. It happens somewhere in the first few months. It is programmed by genes. It deploys itself into existence. And all you can do is observe and enjoy nature because all of this complexity is a program that is laid out in front of you. It's a spectacle of complexity and beauty. Learn to appreciate.